Hey everyone, I really hope your preparation is going well and I hope your IMAT registration which just started today for IMAT 2022 went well. I just realized obviously this morning that the exam is in 60 days and one year ago exactly I created a video on YouTube called what to do 60 days before the IMAT exam and it was quite popular, it's a public video you can find on YouTube. This year I'm going to create a similar version for the same video but I'm going to elaborate way more for the class so you will be able to create a very specific plan for the next 60 days. Put it, putting it aside, which is it is important but I want to discuss something completely different today. Today I want to discuss an issue some of my students and classmates and different people I knew who took the exam head and I want to analyze it and to understand why it happened to them and I want to make sure it won't happen to you. So I had quite a few um, students in the past few years. Some of them took more uh, lessons, some of them took le less lessons, it doesn't really matter. But something I saw in different people that took the Hamlet exam is that Sometimes it doesn't matter how prepared they were to the exam, sometimes they just couldn't score enough and even sometimes the score was very very low, which is the score didn't fit the actual amount they studied. So I decided to kind of interview them and ask them directly after a few months after the results, looking back what do you think what do you think uh, you did wrong pretty much? Uh, what would you change? And what would you do 60 days differently before the AMAT exam? They gave me a list of things, many of them, and the main thing on the AMAT exam itself was the stress issue. Now, of course, the AMAT exam is only once a year, and of course, it's a it's very stressful exam. But depending on which strategy you're going to use on the IMAT exam, on the day of the exam itself, and of course what you're going to do before the exam, which we are going to discuss in a different lesson, it's going to really help you on the IMAT exam itself. So if some of, some of them um, of you knew already, uh, I did a lot of study with me streams in the past two years. It's a stream which I show myself study on YouTube, and I just discussed with different people do, during the breaks. And I realized during these 12 hours that many of them suggested a lot of really good um, podcasts and books about how to manage stress during exams. So I've read all of them and I listened to all of the podcasts. And I came with some sort of an idea which I applied with some of the students in the class already. And I really want to share it with with all of you. So let's dive right into it pretty much. So the exam itself is 100 minutes so I'm going to create a graph which represents the stress level compared to the time of the exam. So let's say this is the stress and this is the 100 minutes of the exam. Let's call it time t for time. And you have 0 for the beginning of the exam and 100 for the end of the exam. I'm not considering the time extension because I will explain as, as I explained to some of the students who have time extension it's a bit different because many different exam centers while you need to have quiet in the this 30 minutes extra you're not going to be able to actually solve the exam because at least in Tel Aviv which is the exam center I took the exam myself it was very noisy and there was no way you could have actually solved the entire paper or the rest of the questions in these 30 minutes. So let's not discuss the extra 30 minutes today. So you would expect that in the first 15 to 20 minutes, according to my past students and all of the um, podcasts and books I've read in this uh, specific subject, in the first 15 to 20 minutes, 20 minutes of any exam you're going to be the most stressed. So you're going to have hormones like epinephrine which is adrenaline, dopamine, it's going to be released in a very high amount as you remember from the hormone lesson and it's going to interfere with your um, ability to think clear. So it's something that you should actually consider and if you can't prepare to the fact that you're going to be a bit stressed at the beginning of the exam you'll be able to actually cure it a plan 
with me, of course, that is going to allow you to solve specific questions in these 20 minutes that you are the most stressed. So the idea is that in the first 20 minutes of the exam, you're going to have pretty high stress levels. But the stress levels depends on the results of the 20 minutes, which I'm going to explain in a few minutes, are either going to go up or to go down. We are going to aim, of course, to lower the stress levels in the first 20 minutes. Then you should expect pretty low stress levels all over the next, let's say, 70 minutes until 90 minutes. Then, of course, 10 minutes before the end of the exam, you're going to be a bit more stressed, so the exam stress is going to be a bit up again. This is the general graph when it comes to stress against time in exams. And it's something that is pretty important to know. Because why are we going to need to know this graph for the IMAT exam? So for my students, I'm going to make sure to explain that in the first 20 minutes, because, and it is very, very important to understand, every question on the IMAT exam, if you solve it correctly, equals to the same exact 1.5 points. So it's so, so important to understand that even if you solve a very easy question, and even if you solve a very difficult question that might take you 5 to 10 minutes, the points that you are going to make are going to be exactly the same. It doesn't matter the difficulty of the question. And something I saw with some of my students and people I knew that took the IMAT exam is that they face a difficult question, they try to encourage themselves and to they kind of fought against themselves to solve this question but eventually they just wasted precious time five to ten minutes for a single question so what we are going to aim for in the first 20 minutes is you are going to solve the easiest questions from your best subject the subject you feel the most confident in so for me let's say it's biology and I believe it will be the same for many of you. And it's going to be this year 15 and forward 15, 15 uh, questions. So we are going to go to biology from the beginning of the exam. We are going to review the entire subject as I'm going to show you on this paper specifically. And we are going to find the questions that are the easiest to solve, which I'm also going to show you in a second. What does solving very easy questions from the subject we feel the most confident at actually give you? It gives you the ability to relax at the beginning of the exam. For me personally, I kind of knew, I didn't uh, research it before the exam, but I kind of knew I'm going to experience the stress level at the beginning of the exam, and I knew the subject I am feeling the best, the most confident at is biology. So I knew I'm going to solve biology before everything and I'm going to look for the easiest questions. And I did it and this is actually the IMAT I took specifically in 2019, three years ago. And this is why I'm going to show this specific paper. So if you still didn't uh, review this IMAT paper, maybe wait until you actually uh, solve 2019 as a simulator before you view this lesson. And I knew I'm pretty much going to gain confidence in the first 20 minutes of the exam. Another very important um, topic to understand and concept to understand in this lesson is that you're going to earn the most amount of points at the first half of the exam, which means that probably in these 20 minutes, you are going to find like seven to eight questions that you are very confident at, at the biology, in the biology section, and you're going to feel very confident right at the beginning of the exam while making like 50 points from only this subject. So it's going to allow you to make a lot of points for the rest of the exam right at the first 20 minutes, even though there are many, many different questions on the exam that some people around you are probably struggling with. So I also want to discuss what are the things you shouldn't do when you approach the AMAT exam. You shouldn't open the exam paper and start from the beginning without developer strategy. If you are going to do it, you're going to trap yourself and waste time when it comes to problem solving and critical thinking question. It's so important that, I mean, if you are good at these questions, very, very good modern biology, 
you could give it a try. For example, many of the class students are native speakers. Native speakers, they can solve the critical thinking questions quite easily. So if you believe you can get the most points from the critical thinking questions, go ahead. But if you do struggle, you, you started from the logic section, and you do struggle to solve them in more than two or three minutes, you can just skip questions right from the beginning. Don't reach a point where the first questions that you are going to try to attempt are very difficult for you. Imagine a scenario when you are given an exam and the first questions that you must solve, all three or four of them, are very difficult for you. The fact that it was very, very difficult for you is going to stress you the entire exam itself. So instead of going down the graph of stress against time during the exam, you're just going to either go like this or just go up from here. You really don't want to reach a scenario where you're getting more stress instead of re relieving the stress at the beginning of the exam. So in this section, you're going to pretty much solve the easiest questions. In this section, you're going to solve the rest of the sections. And in this section, you're going to pretty much review the questions that you weren't sure because you will for sure reach a few questions that were kind of 50-50 and you weren't sure. So maybe these 70 minutes are going to allow you pretty much to relax a bit and then get the, the answer for this few more questions. So I will repeat again because it's a very, very important context concept. In the first 20 minutes, 15-20 minutes of the exam, you're going to take the easiest subject and you're going to solve the easiest questions from this subject. From 20 to 90 minutes, you're going to solve the rest of the exam. After you did what you did in the 20 minutes for all of the subjects, depends on how well you are going to score and how confident you feel in different subjects. And the rest 10, 5, 10 minutes, you're going to score a few more points in the less questions that you were like 50-50. So how do I actually find the easiest questions? The easier questions, and let me go directly to biology. The easier questions are usually questions that are shorter and contain keywords or diagrams, for example, genetics, that you immediately recognize as something that you feel confident at. During your analysis that you're going to do with me in the class in the next 60 days, we are going to review a lot, a lot of questions. And in these questions, you are going to recognize a very specific pattern. As you saw the genetic, ge genetic pedigree questions, you immediately you just look at it and you know this is a genetic question. Or let's say you see this question. So this, this question says electron microscope and magnification. I know this is a question about uh, sizes of different parts. Then I go to this question. I see a table, which is pretty common on the IMAT. And then I see correct, incorrect. So you will know that this question is, might be a bit more difficult because you have to review all of this table. So this is just 10 seconds into the exam. Then you have this question, which is obviously genetic pedigree. Me personally, I, I'm pretty good when it comes to genetic pedigree. So I just going to maybe mark something next to it and I'm going to reach back to it later. Let's go to the next one. This question looks quite complex, the one, the 27 one, because you're going to have two questions, one or two questions, maybe three on each paper. And the first one you're going to notice is probably the biggest one. The first one you notice on this paper is probably not something you're going to solve immediately in the first few minutes because it's pr probably the most complex question. And even if it's an easy question, although it, it was very long, it's not very smart to read it right at the beginning because statistically it's most likely be a complex question even if it's long or because it is long. So 26 is pretty short and I recognize keywords like anaphase, mitosis and healthy human liver cell. It's the most pretty much repetitive uh, keywords which we are going to discuss of course, in, of course in future lessons when we actually analyze the questions. But you already recognize that it talks about mitosis. Personally, I'm pretty good in mitosis, so I'm going to mark this question as something that I'm going to do in the next few minutes. Next one. 
we are going to see another table. So this table contains viral envelope, cap seed, genetic material. I know this uh, question is about viruses. So viruses is something uncomfortable with. I'm going to mark it. The next one. Next one talks about patches, black hair, cells, single hair, zygote, mutations. I'm going to just look at the entire question and recognize the keywords. The set of the keywords, as you can see, you have um, cells, you have alleles, you have um, recessive alleles. It's most likely a um, genetic um, heritage question, which means that personally it's something that I might not be as comfortable with. So I'm not going to solve it right at the beginning. I'm going to skip it. Let's go to the next one. This one is an example to a very short question. This question is either you know it or you don't know it from the amount of text we actually have. It might be tricky and of course, of course it might be tricky because it's the IMAT exam. So it's going to require from you a lot of thinking usually, but it's once you th thought about the answer, it's going to require around 40, 50 seconds to solve this type of question. Because although it's a very short question, it's important to say that you always have to analyze the question itself. Let's go to ne the next one. Of course, we mark it as something that we are going to solve in a few. This question. This question is obviously a question about DNA, RNA, the central dogma in general. It's very common on the IMAT biology section, so we are going to mark it because it's something I'm really going to discuss a lot in this class because it's pretty much so repetitive. So I wouldn't be stressed about you not knowing about it thanks to the class pretty much because I'm really going to uh, cover it from any direction possible. This question, and I personally hate this question because I just skipped it immediately on the AMAT exam itself and I just kept it to the end of the exam. It's a huge question. It has maybe chemistry and temperature and a lot of text and it's a full paper. So I'm just going to skip it even if it was in hindsight, it was a pretty straightforward question. But during the stress and the exam itself, I'm just going to skip this question. More questions. Another table, and tables are something which is extremely common on the IMAD, so you guys should really get used to solve and analyze questions. And I'm going to explain how to do it in future lessons, of course. We see amino acids, glucose, fatty acids. It's probably a question about either metabolism, biochemistry, which is something I personally find um, less complex. So I'm going to mark it. Next one. A band, I band, H zone, the muscle physiolo physiology, I'm going to mark it. So pretty much I'm finding the questions I feel the most confident at and I'm just going to mark them as a, as a question I'm going to in a few minutes just to solve. Also looking at the question is kind of uh, unconsciously going to allow you to process these questions and to get ready mentally to solve this subject, which is not really scientifically based, but it's a more of a, um, more of a confident feeling of the first few minutes of the exam. This one is ob obviously a question about the nephron because you can see the nephron. If you are good at the kidney physiology, you mark it. If not, you skip. Which I doubt you won't be good at kidney physiology. Okay, more questions. Uh, CO2 produced, CO2 produced, CO2 produced, statement metabolism, plants, ob obviously photosynthesis. You're good. Solving. Another question. I see restriction enzyme. I see H bonds. I see enzymes, modification, restriction. Obviously, my enzymes, I'm going to solve it. This question, pretty straightforward, pretty short. I'm going to mark it just to be safe because the question itself looks pretty short and I want to give it a try. Next question, which statement is correct? These questions are usually a bit more complex, so I would give it a try, but at the end, so I wouldn't mark it and I go to the next one. Which of the following processes involve ions? Ions, um, something I personally feel confident, I'm going to mark because it's a pretty straightforward, short answer, short question. Let's go to the next one, chemistry. Now, I can do the same for chemistry, but I'm going to solve all the easy questions for biology first. And if solving the biology section was easy for me, I'm going to go back and now I'm going to solve the harder questions in biology, or at least the questions I suspect to be harder in biology. Then you will see that in the first 20 minutes, you're going to solve the subject that you feel the best at, the, that you're the most, you study the most and you feel confident, and it's going to allow you to 
let me get to the first page it's going to allow you to if I will find it somewhere never mind it's going to allow you to remove to relieve the stress levels in the first 20 minutes because the most important part of the exam that you are actually going to solve the most amount of questions is from around 20 to 90 minutes the harder questions but you are going to also earn a lot a lot of points in the first 20 minutes which you are going to make sure to be uh, less stress and relieve the stress by one finding the easier questions from the subject you like the most and two solve them and gain the confidence you did it before everything then you can proceed when you are less stress and I know this video was a bit long and the concept itself was pretty repetitive but you guys really have no idea how important it is for my students and for people who take the IMAT or any exam in general to apply this concept when it comes to multiple choice and multiple questions on one exam especially when it comes to a very stressful exam so I really hope it helps you if you have any question don't forget to um, to reply them to this uh, topic below and please please make sure to apply or at least develop some sort of strategy to get used to this kind of strategy because I wouldn't say it's, it's scientifically uh, well researched but I would say it's it's quite based uh, on from what I've, uh, I've learned recently and from more importantly my past students who some of them were very were struggle um, struggled on the exam because of stress so it's really important that you guys understand that stress is something that you're going to encounter of the exam on the exam and you have you have to make sure you're going to um, walk the st stress level during the exam itself see you in the next lesson